is on Thrifty Thursday. I'm heading over to have some lunch with my parents and we're going to do some cooking together, me and my mom, and just have uh, some time together before another round of storms come in. And um, I got my laptop with me in case I get stuck over at my parents' house and I um, still need to do some work. But I figured I might as well go over there and be bored if I'm going to be bored at my house. So um, I do not have my son today. It's a holiday, plus he's on vacation with his dad for the week. And so I've been doing a lot of planning as a single mom. I've been uh, doing a lot of uh, figuring out where I want to be um, and what I want to do with my life as a single mom. Um, I've had the most hateful divorce ever. Um, <laughs> my ex-spouse has taken away all my child support, all my legal rights as a mother. He has taken away um, all my taxes and is suing me for back taxes from last year which according to the IRS is stupid. So um, I am feverishly trying to figure out how does a single mom make it who has no job, has health issues, waiting on surgeries, gastric bypass surgery or knee replacement, whichever comes first, and have a doctor's appointment this week. Um, maybe, just maybe, I'll have a scheduled date for surgery. I have court hearing the middle of July, and that is to determine whether or not um, my husband gets his way and I go to jail or not. So if I go to jail, I lose everything, and my planning is pointless. I will lose my apartment, I will lose my car, I will lose everything I have anything I have left but I'll have my dignity because I'm gonna do what's right and I will be following God in jail worshiping and um, just growing my relationship with God so with that said um, I don't know what's gonna happen in my future for me but I do know that being a single mom um, and possibly on disability and being a single mom, possibly um, losing everything and having to start over again from scratch due to my ex-spouse and his decisions. Um, I've been kind of researching, you know, what do I do? How, how do I make it in life? Um, I've been very blessed by a lot of church support for the month of July. However, I really um, would like to have a plan put in place for if I do have surgery, for if I have to do things on my own and I am starting over from scratch after jail, before jail, without jail, it doesn't matter. Um, I need to follow false allegation modification that I have. I need to follow the settlement agreement that I have. I need to keep doing what's right, telling the truth, and as a single mom, it doesn't matter what the decisions of other people are in my life. I need to keep my focus on my relationship with Jesus Christ um, completely intact and need to keep that firm foundation, you know, stand strong, put on the full armor of God as I'm fighting these ridiculous battles that I have to follow, um, that I have to do. And so I, um, feel like I'm in the calm before the storm, you know, the calm before the bad weather comes <laughs> like it is today. Um, the clouds are puffy and it's you can see it brewing in the sky you know and I just kind of feel like um, I'm protected in my car that's why I can go to my parents house even though a storm may pop up out me up and 
I may get stuck. And that's kind of my life right now. I feel like I'm in the middle of a storm, but God's protecting me and I'm stuck. I am stuck with no love, no support from my ex-spouse. Um, after three months shy of 10 years of marriage and just I am just stuck I am really really stuck you guys and um, I have filled out my Social Security paperwork so I can get my benefits from the jobs that I have worked prior um, even though I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 year, almost 10 years, um, and I pretty much stayed home most of the time. This was an agreement made by my spouse and I as um, we figured that it would be cheaper, honestly, for me to stay home and raise three kids. Um, my kids are all five years apart in age, and um, I'm so grateful that they are because um, it really helped um, have those different age groups that I was having to, um, you know, bring up and I had space and I had time in between giving birth to each child. And, um, I have been a single mom with two kids before. Now I'm a single mom again with two kids. And I, I'm just trying to figure out how do I make it without that support from the ex-spouse and um, you know this channel is about being a Christian it's about being a single mom and for Thrifty Thursday today I just want to talk on my way to my parents house with you guys about budgeting and about how can we do um, life without that support you know if that ex-spouse wants to be a jerk, they're going to be a jerk. There's nothing we can do about it. And, um, you know, when you don't feel loved and supported by your ex-spouse, and then they turn around and just uh, backstab you in the back legally and as a Christian, wow, you, you know what you were feeling was true. You know, you really do know that that battle is real. The, the struggle is real and you're scrambling as a mom to figure out how am I going to do this you know and as a Christian thank you Jesus that he's always there for you um, I wouldn't be able to do it without him you know he's um, my husband now God is trustworthy and he will always provide a way when you don't feel like there's any way out and um, he'll bring those people into your life to help you as you're struggling as a single mom. And, uh, you know, I just keep praying and waiting for that day where my family is reunited together. But until that happens, it is a struggle. And I want to be always transparent and honest with you guys on where I'm at mentally and physically and um, financially and so I thought I would talk to you about you know being thrifty as a single mom I was watching living on a dime to grow rich with Tyra and Mike and um, they were talking about the difference between working moms and stay-at-home moms. You actually earn more money being right here's my numbers down here for those for the ones that I was running through, sorry. Um, you actually earn more money, almost $15,000 more, by being a stay-at-home mom versus working. And, um, you know, I think they did it right, the way that they were uh, doing the podcast. And they even addressed single moms. And they said, you know what? Single moms... They need to be making better choices with who they marry. And um, that's just a flat out honest truth, you know? I dated my husband about nine months before we got married and it wasn't long enough. Um, as a Christian, um, when I first met my husband, I didn't want to be with him. I didn't like him. 
I saw the old self in him. When we got married, he um, pretended to be that Christian man that I wanted. You know, the love bombing began. And so we, when it, I went into my marriage believing that I was marrying a Christian man. And it wasn't even three weeks after we were married, I found out the truth. And I was already pregnant. So, you know, I do agree with we need to pick our partners and our spouses better in our life and our relationships that we have with the opposite sex. But at the same time, we need to... trust people. As a single mom before, I had built up walls, you know, and I think for me to even get to that point of being willing to remarriage was only because I heard from God, and he said, marry this man. So, I did, and we instantly had a family, and instantly bought a house, and instantly decided that I was going to be a stay-at-home mom, I was going to be pregnant, raise the kids, I was going to quit my job working and I was going to, um, you know, take care of the home while he worked. And it was just financially better for us. We didn't have to pay for daycare. Someone else wasn't raising our child. And we were um, going to make it, you know. We had a lot of help with family and we were poor and we lived our whole marriage this way being very poor and honestly um, our mortgage was now $35 cheaper than what I'm paying for my rent as a single mom so you know it can be done it is something that we need to as um, single moms to really think about who we are marrying. Is there a possibility that that person's always going to change their mind and act a and uh, act a certain way towards you and become a jerk to you? Yes, there is that possibility. Um, people have that right to make their own decisions in their life and um, move on with someone else. You know, um, it's supposed to be through thick <laughs> sickness and in health. And um, it should be through thickness and in health <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I am going to really concentrate on me now as a single mom so I can be back. I can be back to my old self. I can have gastric bypass. I can fix my knees. I can do whatever it takes for me to get healthier again so I can be a good mom. So I can um, do the things that I desire to do as a single mom. Um, throughout my last two or three years of my separation and divorce and all this battle that I'm going through legally in the court system, I have realized one thing. I don't really care anymore. I have gotten to the point in my life where I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to stand up for what's right. I'm going to um, focus on being a Christian. That's the number one thing I'm going to be is a Christian. The second thing I'm going to be is a mom. And I'm going to be the best mom I can be. You know, um, and whatever that takes is what I'm going to do. And so as I'm going through my budget, I'm trying to gather up. Um, gift cards and I'm trying to do those things that end up being free for me because I didn't pay money for it or because I budgeted out gift cards to do those fun things once a month for my kids so even if you go out and you buy a gift card for your kid and you spend $25 here on a gift card to do something fun with your kid then that is your budget you know $25 for, for one paid fun thing to do a month and then the rest of the things that you do um, are gonna be free so in the city I live we have music in the park on Sundays during the summertime in the summertime they have free movie nights and um, the movie theater has discounted Tuesdays so 
um, we can get in and see a movie for five dollars on Tuesdays and you know take advantage of couponing take advantage of those free gifts that other people give you and um, you know buying cheap you know doing things that are cheap it doesn't take a whole lot of money to go buy an ice cream cone um, you know have a free um, ice cream Sunday day and movie at home you know get the sprinkles get the bananas get the cherries get the ice cream and just pile it all in a bowl you know make your own snow cones at home instead of going and buying a snow cone these are things that are cheaper that we can do as single moms with our kids um, my city also has free water spray parks not as fun as the pool but you know what it's great um, if you're divorced like me and that other parent pays for season passes somewhere or they decide that they're going to help um, pay for the kid and if you guys get along maybe you guys can share expenses when it comes to your children but if you're in a situation and you're a single mom like me and you don't have that communication you don't have that co-parenting with the other parent and there is complete distance between the two of you it's not going to work you're not going to be able to co-parent and therefore the child is going to suffer um, financially because you can't do it on your own you need some support group I was talking to a girl on Facebook marketplace and she was talking to me about the um, fact that she's a single mom she's having a baby in a couple of months and she needs anything donated that anybody can give to her and um, I told her she needs a support group and she's like I don't have one and I'm like you need to get one you know go find a local church get involved in a um, woman's shelter or anything like that get a support group there are people out there who will help um, for me, I um, am not being physically abused or anything like that. It's just emotionally, financially, and the uh, legal system that is abusing me. But as um, Christians, we need that support group for sure. Um, I went through divorce care. Divorce care really, really helped me as I was dealing with having to do um, dealing with the court systems um, they have really given me a lot of legal advice um, as much as they can as far as sending me um, to like free legal aid and Hope House even though I've been denied and they won't take the case they do give me some legal advice on what I need to be doing um, and so you know it is really really great for us single moms to have those people in our lives that will support us um like i said my local church and actually four local churches are really really supporting me right now helping me get through the times of these false allegations and these legal battles um i've got a lot of people talking and helping me financially when I have nothing I am about ready to lose it all you guys and um, it's sad that it has come to this but when you know that you haven't done anything wrong when you know that you haven't um, done anything but you know sacrifice for your kids then um, it's just a situation that you're in and um, there is no way out there is no way out without God intervening. And so um, for the month of July, God has really provided for me and I can't complain. So I'm here um, at my parents' house and we're going to have a really good um, barbecue chicken dinner. And um, I'm going to be making some green bean bundles and we are going to um, just have a feast. You know? I watched Jack Hibbs last night. Um, what I could, it got cut off. Uh, YouTube policies, but 
he talked about our freedoms and how United States of America was built on constitutional rights, how it was founded on God and, you know, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And uh, going through my court battles and in the world that we are in right now in the United States of America, today is Freedom Day. Today is a day to be respectful for law and order and um, our constitutional rights and for justice. And um, it just really helps me, you know, keep that foundation. As a Christian, I'm founded on God. And I need to be reminded daily as I'm struggling financially that God has got me. God's got me. And so um, God's got you as a single mom. But um, what I want to talk to you about is about being a working mom versus a um, non-working mom and a stay-at-home mom. And so um, I was watching, like I said, Living on a Dime to Grow Rich. She talks about um, a working mom and kids in daycare and how you take away all those expenses, and she did it based on an average. Um, it is the amount that you will make as a working mom after paying all expenses and daycare is a dollar something. And it's ridiculous. The stress that single moms especially have as working moms and, um, you know, having to put your child in daycare or have someone else watching the kids. So she says, um, you know, that stress based on a, even a married couple when that mother is working in the home, um, they don't make the meals. So they're not saving money on um, meals. They're eating out all the time. They're running their kids back and forth to all these activities and they're paying for daycare and the kids are suffering and there's a lot that goes with it. And then, you know, it's the number one cause of divorce, finances. Um, it is not the fact that that person changed their mind. It's not the fact that that person wants to be with someone else. It's not the fact that weight gain in, in, your, in the wife. You know, it is um, due to finances. And so when you're poor, like I was when I was married on top of that person just wants to be with someone else, that person wants to be selfish. That person wants to abandon his family. Then, um, going to get divorced because of those choices. And, um, one thing I know when I was married is this was a decision we made together for me to stay home because we knew that it was just not going to be worth it for me to work a job. Um, later as the kids got older, I started working part time. And, um, even then when my husband was home to watch the kids, he was never home to watch the kids. My husband um, always called my mom. My mom was always there. My mom had the kids most of the weekend. Um, and so, um, you know, the battles I'm going through, the false allegations I'm going through now is just a result of lies. And so I have this stability in my life that I have always maintained, even as a single mom um, before. I worked weekends only. Every other weekend, I only had the kids. And Monday through Friday, I stayed home with my kids. I was available 24-7. I worked Monday through Friday babysitting, and it helped um, a little bit during the week. And then I worked a real job full-time overnights. And um, I had a sleeping job where I slept, um, and I took care of the mentally handicapped. And so it was really a perfect job for a single mom because I um, sent the kids again to my mom's and um, as a single mom before my marriage, you know, but at the same time, you got to understand what the cost, cost of having someone else raise your kid is. Um, if you are putting your kids in daycare, I'm going to tell you as a daycare worker, there is hitting, there is biting, there are um, situations where your kid's not getting the attention that they deserve and they need from their mom um, because they are stuck in daycare all day long. 
So if you are a part-time working mom and you just want to send your kids to daycare for a couple hours so you can do this and you have the money and you have the support from your spouse, great. That's great. You know, every mom needs alone time. If you have a husband who's supportive, who will watch that kid and um, do his responsibility of helping out and working really hard and he's doing that, that's great. But um, what I loved about this YouTube uh, video from Tyra and Mike was that they t broke it down to how much a working mom would make, how much a stay-at-home mom would make, and um, save. And so um, when you're a stay-at-home mom, you're not having to pay for daycare. You're there 24-7 for your kids. Um, they start talking about how you can... Um, slash your groceries um, and save a buck or two. Right now, I'm not working, therefore I'm on food stamps. The government is paying for my food. I wanna to get to the point where I'm off government assistance again. I have gone on and off, on and off, on and off, because I know I can do it on my own. Problem is, I'm having my health issues right now and I'm gonna to have to take out some social security in order to pay my bills. Um, and it takes a long time for the paperwork to go through. So I'm just letting you guys know it, it's going to be a struggle for me um, uh, as I wait on my surgeries. So, um, you know, cut out pop. You know, right now it's like $8 a 12-pack um, of pop. <laughs> you know, cut out that Starbucks coffee. Make your own at home. Um, buy used. Everything I buy in my home is pretty much used at this point. Um, when I first went through my divorce, I did get a big chunk of change and I did buy some new items, new furniture, um, because I left a lot of my furniture and a lot of my belongings with my ex-spouse. A lot of my things, my ex-spouse and his sister went through and they took what they wanted. If I did not have it on my settlement agreement and I just said household items, they went through and grabbed what they wanted. Um, and so a lot of these things, um were um, taken away from me. I did not have my belongings for nine months. And when I moved into my apartment after we were kicked out of the house and um, we were on our own with nowhere to go, homeless for about a month until my parents could help me out and I could get back on my feet um, after being a stay-at-home mom for almost 10 years. Um, you know, it took a lot for me to go to the store and buy things. And um, it would, uh, and during that time when I wasn't really working a whole lot of hours and I wasn't making enough money and I didn't have any money, I went and found things on the side of the road. And that's what I lived on. And we found furniture, we found clothes, we found toys, we found decorations. And then, of course, church came to the rescue and people were giving me items. I had a lot of family who just donated things for us and um, it did not take long at all. Within that first month, we were good. We had everything we needed and um, I think it was three or four months after living in my apartment, about three months after living in my apartment, we had Christmas and it was one of the best Christmases ever and it, I didn't buy a thing. And so it was great, and it was just the um, being together, you know, having that time with my kids. That's what meant the most. So, you know, understand what the cost is if you're going to be a working mom. The cost of um, what it's going to do psychologically to your kids, especially if you're a single mom and you're divorced. Um, picking your job, you know, how long is it going to take you to get back and forth? How much gas are you spending? How much wear and tear are, on your car are you having? Um, a lot of these single moms, they have loans on cars and all this, but they get a lot of child support. People like me, I have a crappy car I've had for many, many years. I paid cash for this car. And if it breaks down, I have no money, no money to fix it, no savings and no husband to help me anymore. So, um, I'm in a lot of trouble financially right now, and I'm just amazed on how God has provided for me another month. I really seriously didn't think it wasn't going to make it to July, and here I am, July 4th, celebrating my freedom and my Independence Day. Um, 
but you got to remember that God gave you your children. He's the one who gave us our spouses. He's the one who put our families together. And if you're a Christian, you're totally going to believe in that unity of um, the Trinity, you know, with your spouse and with God. And um, you are three in one when you're married. And when you say your vows, you're committed for life, no matter if that person weight, gains weight, no matter if that person um, gets in a wreck and tears up their face. It doesn't matter if they have cancer and if they're unhealthy or if you are financially broke or what life brings you in your life. You're going to stay committed as a Christian to your spouse and you're going to respect your spouse. You're going to help support your spouse. You're going to do anything to um, show your children that you love your spouse. And I think that's the one thing with divorce and an ugly situation where you have a spouse who just wants to ruin the other spouse. Um, you know, what's that doing to the child of that parent? Um, one thing divorce care really taught me and the one thing that um, being a single mom has taught me is it becomes a battle where it's just greed. It's greed and it's pride and it's selfishness. And um, when that other person is that way, uh, that child is going to be stuck in the middle. It's not going to be the best interest of the child whatsoever. And it's going to be a tug of war instead of a co-parenting and working together. And the kid is going to suffer. They're going to grow up to know, you know, what really happened in mom and dad's divorce. And you know, I think this is why God says he hates divorce so much. Um, so choose wisely who you are going to marry. That's what they said. Um, and, you know, a lot of women, a lot of single moms, they say that they are, um, they just don't understand what happened to their spouse. I can tell you, I know exactly what happened to my spouse. Um, and it's not what he's doing to me, but it's what he's doing to his own child. And it's not what he's doing to me, but it's what he's doing to God. Um, he's walked away and abandoned not only me, but everyone else, the children of the home, um, our pets, our family, our friends, and walked away from God. So we got to remember as Christians, you know, who do we serve? And we need to make our own choices that we are going to serve Jesus Christ in our lives as Christian single moms. And um, he makes that promise to us that he is always going to provide and he will never fail us. Never, never, never. So um, get counseling. Get that help you need to help you as you're struggling. This is one thing I have done. I have reached out to a local church. I am now going to counseling. I'm on month three of going to counseling. I love it. Um, I don't remember what life was like when I didn't have the counseling. <laughs> um, it's helping me so much. And um, it's getting me the help that I need uh, mentally to get through these battles. And, um, you know, it's all about your life and making choices and reducing that stress in your life. No matter what battles I'm going through, I can reduce my stress. I have that right as a single mom to make this choice. Now, um, I don't have to do what my husband says. I don't have to, um, you know, follow down that track of um, leaving God out of my marriage. So I can make the conscious choice of following God in everything I do. And that's including my finances. It's about being thrifty. It's about um, saving money when you can. Cut your own hair. You know, don't go out, do your nails and um, all that. This is something I have not done in many, many years. Um, and that's why I look the way I do. And um, it does add to my depression. But I am going to tell you, I do have a um, couple of gift cards. And I'm saving them for after I heal from my weight loss surgery. Because I want to be a new me. I want to be able to not only take care of the weight issues I'm having, but I need to take care of my hair and my nails and, you know, get a massage. I, I want to take care of my health overall. 
And the whole point of me having weight loss surgery is to take care of my knees and my pain in my knees. So where I'm at with working, not working. I was working. I loved my job as a daycare worker. However, my health is going bad. So what um, I need to do now as I am refocusing for school to begin and keep staying where I'm at, I am relying on the support of my church until this next week. When I get my surgery scheduled, I do plan on um, kind of having a plan put in place. And today, being 4th of July, I am going to enjoy a feast, which is what we are supposed to do on July 4th, celebrate, you know, with our family and friends, um, our freedoms. And I am going to um, have a really good lunch and I'm going to budget and I'm going to think about the future and how am I going to make it. And so as I'm waiting on my social security to go through and um, I'm using 100% right now of government assistance, I want to eventually have a plan put in place to get off of all this assistance and this help. And then in return, I want to help you. I want to help other single moms out there who are going through what I'm going through. And hopefully at this time, I have kept myself out of jail and everything is good financially for me and I can get back on track. However, at this point, I have nothing. I have nothing to give and I cannot give to um, anyone else and I am wanting to make these videos because I want to share this journey with you guys. Um, I need help. I need support. I need to come up with a work at home job, whether it's being a reseller or whether it's um, doing product reviews, whether it's sharing other businesses. Um, so if you do have a business out there and you have a product you want to send to me um, in the description box below will be my P.O. box. Send me your item. I will give you a shout out here on YouTube. I will review your product and, um, you know, I'll give you my honest opinion and truth. But, you know, the more videos I make here on YouTube, the better it will be as far as educational and um, learning for you as a single mom out there. And, um, it will eventually become a work at home business for me. I want to be available for my kids 24 seven. Um, and I want to own my own business. This is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Blessed be the gift is a business idea that I've had for a very long time. And in the month of July, 2024, I am going to start all that back up if I'm not sitting in jail. So, um, if I go to jail, I lose my business also. So there'll be no money. There'll be nothing I can give. So at this point, I am going to um, do what I can with what I got. And um, I'm going to be focusing this next week on a plan. I'm going to share that plan with you moving forward. But I am starting with this. So it's very, very difficult to live as a single mom when you have this. <laughs> and... Um, the government doesn't even like you having this. <laughs> they want you to do something. They want you to try. So um, I am going to be trying and I am going to be um, waiting on those doctor's appointments that I have coming up to uh, walk me through the process. I do have a caseworker who's helping me right now and I have to do what they tell me to do with all of my decisions that I have to make in my future. And right now they are advising me to keep doing what I'm doing. So I am um, very, very blessed in my life right now. Um, but I do need love and support from you all. Um, I have a GoFundMe page that is also going to be in the description box below if you feel like you want to give. Um, however, I am just going to pay my bills with it. So um, that is what's going to get me through to August. And um my business is probably not going to start up until after I have um, my surgeries and I heal. So I got a long, long recovery coming up. And so keep me in your prayers 
and I'm going to use Thrifty Thursdays to walk through with you all what we can do as single moms to save money. Save money. Um, when you have zero income, zero child support, zero taxes, this is so difficult. And um, right now I'm using the resources I can get. So um, I want to thank you guys for watching and um, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.